Hey guys, it's Hink here. Today we're going to discuss one of the most common forms of erectile dysfunction, especially in younger guys, and this is called a venous leak. And so we're going to break down exactly how it happens, how it's diagnosed, what causes are, how it can relate to things like PE, uh, and basically what to look out for and what we can learn from it. So stay tuned. All right, guys, today we're going to be breaking down something that's called basically a venous leak. When you're talking about an erection, there's really, you have to understand there's really two main things that happen. Number one, you have to have enough blood flow into the penis that you engorge the tissue. And then number two, you have to have the appropriate blockage of the outflow, which is basically what we call veno occlusion or basically prevention of the veins from letting the blood back out into the tissue. Erectile dysfunction is a very complicated and very nuanced topic. There's a lot of pieces in the puzzle, but today we're going to be mainly talking about this venous leak where you don't get that appropriate venous occlusion and therefore you allow blood to exit the penis and it can lead to erectile dysfunction. Okay. And so, first of all, we have to know basically what happens. And so I just described that, but I'm going to put a picture up on the screen, okay? When you normally have an erection, you can see that those inner chambers, your corpora, actually enlarge. And they're basically, you have your smooth muscle. We've broken this down a thousand times. But basically what happens is your body sends signals that, okay, sexual stimulation. Sexual stimulation sends signals to basically the nerves and the endothelial tissue to actually release nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is released. It's goes through complicated changing process to basically a functional form that causes your smooth muscle in the penis to relax. When it relaxes, it allows blood to flow into the penis, into the corpora of the penis. Corpora of the penis therefore distend, and here's where we bring in the venous occlusion. As this area distends, that's when its expansion should compress the vein, and so you can see that in the picture here, but what can go wrong is a couple of different things, but ultimately what what it leads to is that that vein is not compressed. That vein is not compressed, and therefore blood is able to leak back out. There's some studies that have shown that this accounts for up to 80% of vascular erectile dysfunction. So huge numbers. Uh, you know, a good metaphor that I came across is imagine like so you have a tire, right? You want to inflate your tire. So the arteries are like you you know you're doing the pump. You're pumping up the tire right there. But your veins are like if there's a leak in the tire. And so if you're pumping up the tire, no matter how much air you try to put into it, if you have a big hole in that tire, the air is just going to leak back out. And so basically to fix it, we got to figure out how to patch that leak. And so when it comes to erectile dysfunction, there's two important terms, okay? Maybe this is just pedantic, but humor me here, okay? You have your arteriogenic, arterios, arteries, okay, stands for the problem like arteriogenic erectile dysfunction is when there's a problem with blood into the penis. This typically happens in older guys when you have arterial sclerosis or atherosclerosis where you actually have basically a thickening of the vessels which prevents adequate blood flow into the penis. And then the other type of erectile dysfunction is called venogenic. Obviously, if you have arteriogenic arteries, venogenic is with the veins and which is venous leak, which we're basically discussing here today. So who does this affect? So this primarily affects actually in general younger guys. 12% of men under the age of 45 actually have been diagnosed with this type of erectile dysfunction. Sometimes people are just born with this condition. It's uh, just a, a function of the anatomy that you're born with and you can't help it, oftentimes this is actually developed over time. This is different than something like, once again, like chronic damage to your vascular tissue from having chronic hypertension. That happens typically in older guys and so that type of erectile dysfunction is in guys that are like 59 years on average, whereas this type of erectile dysfunction happens typically to guys on an average age of about 51, so a much younger population in general. So what are the symptoms of this? Okay, so guys, here's where you, you kind of have some general symptoms. So I don't want every guy watching this video to be like, oh my God, I have venous leak because I mentioned one thing on this list that is actually might be consistent with what you're going on with. And so first thing is, you have a trouble getting a firm erection. Sometimes your erections can actually start out firm and then gradually decrease over time. Another big thing is position dependent erections. And so I can't tell you how many guys write on our subreddit and say, you know, why is it that when I'm lying down, 
I have awesome erections, but as soon as I go to stand up, I lose my erection. Well, it could be that when you stand up, I mean, there's a lot of different things that could happen, but one of which is you have changes in your basically pelvic anatomy. And so while you're laying down, you have appropriate venous occlusion, your veins are compressed, but then when you stand up for whatever reason that might be, pelvic floor dysfunction, you know, weak pelvic floor muscles, whatever it might be, it's not enough to actual keep that blood into the penis. And so it leaks out of the veins that way. And so if you have position dependent erections, be aware that it could just be you and it could just be normal, or you could actually be, you could have a mild venous leak there. And then there's also something that's called soft gland syndrome. There's a lot of things. Soft gland syndrome is basically when your corpus spongiosum on the underside of your penis doesn't actually fill appropriately. And as a result, the head of your penis does not fill appropriately as well. And so you can also have venogenic causes or the veins lead to that soft gland syndrome. So what are some contributing factors with this, guys? Well, you have to understand that the contributing factors are some of the same contributing factors to erectile dysfunction in general. And so you can have like primarily vascular disease, okay? So this is especially with things like chronic high blood pressure, even things like diabetes that can actually affect the actual endothelial lining of the blood vessels. Normal aging can actually cause you to have contributing factors to this venogenic erectile dysfunction. Nerve disorders. So if your nerves aren't appropriately sending the signals to get that blood flow in, um, it can lead to dysfunction. And then of course, anxiety. I can't say this enough about anxiety, guys, but it forms this vicious cycle where, you know, hopefully this won't happen today, but a guy see my video and says, oh, I think I have a venous leak. And then the next time they try to get hard, they're thinking they have a venous leak. And so they don't get as hard as they normally would. And they actually don't cause the penis to actually engorge enough to actually prevent the venal occlusion. So they get like a soft erection. And then they're like, oh, shit, I do have a venous leak. And it starts this cycle. So guys, please just, you know, take a breath. And there is treatment. If you have this, so don't freak out. We'll get through this, okay? And then a big factor that I, I harp on so much, and guys, I've been blessed with pretty good genetics. I, I, good genetics, okay? It's hard for me to really put on weight. But obesity is one of the major risk factors, as you can see from this paper here, especially when it comes to vascular disorders in general, other metabolic disorders. I've said it before a hundred times. I have another video, which I'll put up the little bloop here. But, you know, being obese is so harmful for your overall health. Look, I'm not fat shaming anybody, guys, so please don't sound off in the comments. This is just objective medical science. It's not healthy to be obese, but it's especially not healthy for your vasculature, and that's documented in papers like I just put up. That can make your risk of things like venous leak much higher. So get to a healthy body weight, guys. It doesn't mean you have to be shredded with a six pack. Just get to a healthy body weight. So how is this diagnosed? Well, fortunately, it's actually kind of easy to diagnose. First thing you should always do is see an actual doctor, okay? If you can't see a urologist, see your general doctor, because things like a physical exam and even learning about if you know, if you have things like diabetes or high blood pressure, those are contributing factors that can be reversed and you can actually reverse this disorder. Also things like a physical exam, if there's any sorts of like trauma or discoloration, bruising on the penis, that might indicate a different process rather than a venous leak. So once you see your doctor, you can also get what we call a Doppler ultrasound. So a Doppler ultrasound basically uses sound waves, but in a particular way where you can actually see blood flow in and out of the penis. And so it's a non-invasive exam unless they inject you with the like erection inducing agent, typically of what we call a prostaglandin, then yeah, there is a little you know needle prick that they numb you up first, but you can actually have good blood flow where you can see, okay, here's the arterial supply. I'll put up a picture here. The arterial supply is in red, the venous supply is in blue, and you can actually watch how that blood flow moves on a live ultrasound, okay? You have to be careful because you have high rates of what we call false positives, false positives. So they do the ultrasound and it looks like you have venous leak, but actually you don't. It's just... Um, it just looks that way on the ultrasound. So you need to be careful. The other thing about ultrasound is you can actually see the different layers. And so, you know, in the odd case that you were to actually have penile fracture, a rupture of your tunica albuginea, you know, I'll put up a picture here, but you can actually see right where that little arrow is pointing to that there is actually a little tear in the tunica albuginea. And so if you do have a major problem like that, you can also see that on ultrasound. Sometimes even things like fibrosis can be diagnosed. One of the things I, I get my clients ask me what I should do, and I uniformly 
recommend they get an ultrasound because it can rule out so many things if it's normal. And so it's one of the standard tests that I would recommend if you have any kind of erectile dysfunction or you're worried about anything. The gold standard is what we call dynamic infusion caversonometry. What does that mean? Well, basically it takes the ultrasound idea and takes it a step further. You get injected with an agent, but you also get these probes that are introduced into your penis where you can actually read the different types of pressure that are actively going on within the penis. And so you can read the different pressures in the chambers with different stimulation. You can inject normal saline. And so there's all of these tests that you can do. And you can even have basically like x-ray imaging performed at the same time where you can actually diagnose if the veins are actually leaking the fluid. Also, if you're interested in learning more about the exact procedure, I will put a link to the paper that I'm describing below and I'll put up a little screenshot here, but they actually break down in depth very eloquently actually exactly how the test is performed if you're interested in exactly what occurs, okay? The one other thing that you can do to actually diagnose this, now this is like a really poor man's like rudimentary test for venous leak. Venous leak means you don't have enough basically constriction on your venous supply. And so you can literally put on a cock ring, okay? You throw on a cock ring, it applies that additional compression on the outside. However, you have to keep in mind, putting on a cock ring will fix a lot of things. But if you do have a venous leak, so for example, you think you have venous leak because it changes in positions, your erectile quality. You throw on a cock ring and you stand up, and you don't lose your erection, then you know that it is, you, you. the problem is your outflow. You have too much outflow. And so, you know, it does kind of help guide decisions, but you can have a lot of false positives with that, guys. But if you are curious, that's kind of a cheap and easy test you can do for yourself. Get an erection, put on a cock ring. If that fixes all your problems, then it could be venous leak. So what does it look like? Well, I'm gonna put some different images on the screen here. And so there's basically four different images that you can see. And so in the first box labeled a, you can see that there is basically that really dark area is where the penis is and where they inject something that's called contrast. Contrast is this radio opaque substance that shows up on x-rays as like a darker image. In this first one, you see that there's no venous leak because all of that dye is trapped within the penis. If you look at the picture labeled B, if you look very closely right around like the top of that little dark circle, you can see that there's also these like two little dark lines that are going out. That's where you actually have some very mild venous leak. That venous blood that is marked with that dye is actually starting to leak out and you can see that. And so on the next labeled C, you can actually see that, you know, the dark penis is there, but if you look, you can, you know, I say this because I look at x-rays all the time, but you know, you can clearly see these like darker lines that are indicating your venous structures where you can have leak of the contrast and then if you look on this last image like you can see those dark lines that are radiating out from the actual penis tissue which you know indicate all the different like pelvic veins leading all the way up to like into the pelvis and so you can see that that is like severe and so on these pictures you have no venous leak mild moderate and then severe venous leak and that's important to know because how severe it is actually indicates what treatments are gonna be most beneficial for you. And so how does this relate to, to PE? And so for those that don't know PE, it basically stands for penile enlargement. Yes, penile enlargement is real, guys. There's documented literature. I'm not gonna fight people in the comments. If you wanna believe me, great. If you don't, it's okay too, man. It's all love. And so where it comes into play is because when you're doing things like manual stretches or using an extender or clamping or pumping, you are inducing trauma upon your penis. Trauma is a risk factor for venous leak, okay? Most importantly is that your veins have these these things that are called basically one-way valves and so let's just just say this is your vein and this is your valve so your valve opens up to let the blood flow go through in this direction and then it closes to prevent you from having the backflow that backflow so if this valve is not working and blood comes in and then it just goes right back through that same hole that's a problem things like that can lead to a, like a condition that's called varicose veins for example so if you've ever seen like an older lady older man and they have these really thick veins for those that are in a bodybuilding like me, Nick Walker, on his legs, that's because the valves have actually failed on, on the veins of his legs. And so this can lead to venous insufficiency, venous leak when these valves failed. And so what you need to be aware is, I think especially when you're talking about girth work, whether it be pumping or clamping or even like manual clamps, you are increasing the internal pressure of your penis and you're putting extra pressure on your actual venous system. And so when you put that pressure on your venous system, you can be at risk of having those 
those valves fail. And so I am not trying to like shade different subreddits here. So I'm going to speak vaguely, but there's like this penile enlargement technique where, you know, the veins take blood from like, for example, your vein in your hand takes blood back down your arm and into your actual heart. You're supposed to go in one specific direction, but there's this one, you know, arguable enlargement technique where you take your thumbs and you move the, the actual blood in literally the opposite direction it's supposed to go. Instead of moving it like back towards your, your body, towards your heart, you're moving it away. You know, I think that's potentially at risk of damaging the valves, but you know, well, once again, I don't hear of many injuries with this, with that technique, but it's just something to think about, okay? Something that can also happen is um, you can have prolonged cock ring use. If you put on a cock ring and the venous blood just pools there, number one, you can obstruct the blood flow and you can have what we call ischemic changes or lack of oxygen causing tissue damage. But number two, the blood flow just sits there and it pools. And that is what can also be problematic and damage those valves. And so that's why, you know, I tend to recommend that you don't like just use cock rings because of some theoretical benefit. And so this is a big point where like me and BD differ because I think he, <laughs> I don't think I'm even misquoting him. He said like, I will die on this hill. But he believes that like wearing a cock ring after pumping, for example, will help to increase your gains. I personally just think it puts you at increased risk of damage from like things like obstructing your lymphatic channels or even just like increased venous pooling in that area and potentially putting yourself at a higher risk of venous leak. Just something to think about, different opinions. Definitely not saying I'm right and he's wrong. I'm just putting different ideas out there. You guys make your own decisions. And so I'll also put up a paper here, but there's literal evidence that you can have increased risk of venous leak with damage to things like the tunica albuginea or your actual like smooth muscle of the penis. And if you haven't seen my other videos, guys, just, just go back through. I've made countless videos about how different enlargement techniques can particularly damage your the smooth muscle and your tunica albuginea. And so by damaging that, you're going to put yourself at an increased risk of venous leak. So just be careful. And that's why my whole thing is learning how to do this safely. And so I make countless videos about supplements, different techniques that you can use to minimize your risk of damage. So if you're interested, just, just check out my, my library, guys. And so what are the treatments? Well, there's oral medications like PDE5 inhibitors. Part of the challenges of venous leak is because it is tied to arterial flow. So if your arterial flow is not coming in strong enough, then you don't have enough blood in your chambers to cause the engorgement to therefore block your veins. Sometimes by taking like a PDE5 inhibitor, which is going to keep more arterial blood into the penis, you can actually have increased venous occlusion and that can actually fix your venous leak. But that's for like mild cases. And so along with that, guys, if you don't have access to something like Viagra or you want a good citrulline based supplement, you guys know I have my supplement Vigor. I've talked about all the benefits of it before. Please check out my other videos for that. But a good sub citrulline based supplement like Vigor can also help you if you have something like mild ED to increase that blood flow to the penis. It's also good for workouts, just for good for erection quality. And so vacuum devices can help, but that's more of a temporary fix. And so that's why I don't think pumping is as much of a problem or doesn't put you at as much of a risk of venous leak. There's things like, once again, a cock ring, okay? It constricts that blood flow out. And there's also something that's called the giala. I think I'm saying it correctly, but it's basically this cock ring that actually put it around your penis and it actually goes like underneath your perineum and like it attaches to actually like the small of your back and it helps keep your cock ring like back down on the base of your penis. It keeps it from migrating up. So if you're interested, check it out. You know, I'll put a little screenshot here so you can go to the website. I'm not in any way endorsed. I just thought it was kind of interesting. There's extreme things that you can do like self ejections to your penis or even like urethral suppositories of prostaglandin, something that's going to help induce that erection. Then of course there's um, surgeries. And so surgeries are like what we call ligation surgery. In some cases, it's literally making a small incision. A trained urologist will go in there and literally just like tie off the vein that's leaking. Success rates kind of vary from the data that I've seen. It can be as high as like 50%. And so if you do have like a severe venous leak that isn't controlled with medications, it is something to consider. And along with that, there's also interventional radiologists that can actually do what's called an embolization where they will actually put like a catheter into the vein and inject a little blob of glue, for lack of a better word, that actually blocks that vein and so you can't have venous leak out. But those can be quite successful. There's lifestyle modifications. And then believe it or not, there's actually evidence that pelvic floor exercises, which I've preached about before, can actually successfully reverse mild cases of this about 42% of the time, guys. So just by learning how to strengthen 
relax and stretch your pelvic floor at the same time, which I know seems a little hypocritical, but it can actually reverse some of this damage. So what are my takeaways from this? Venous leak is common, okay? It's common, especially in younger guys. It's pretty easy to diagnose and it can be pretty easy to correct. So if you think you have this, like don't just wait. I mean, do some of these things I talked about. Get worked up, get worked up like the appropriate medical workup. Don't get all anxious and flustered and shit. But uh, it is something that uh, that can be corrected, guys. And it is something that we have to be aware of in those active in the PE community so we're not putting ourselves at undue risk. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Vigor, uh, like I said, it's getting great reviews. It's available now on Amazon. We are about to sell out of our second batch. And I just got confirmation today that uh, Virility should, we're about maybe two weeks out from actually that having being available in the market. And so I'm very excited about that. If you need my coaching or my help, Doc Kink is my Patreon. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.